Good morning. Uh, welcome as we prepare for worship this morning. Uh, Gary Wood will be giving us a prelude as we prepare for worship. Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, those who are from Trinity and those who are friends and beyond, um, we are very, very glad that you are here with us today. Um, here at Trinity today would have been a Sunday that we acknowledge and thank our uh, teachers for the work that they do, the ministry that they do, our Sunday school teachers, our confirmation teachers. Um, and uh, I just wanna put a shout out uh, to all of them today for all the work they have done throughout this year and also um, the ministry they continue to do uh, during this time. Let us open this morning with a prayer. Spirit of life and love, we gather together in different ways this morning 
from computer screens, from telephones, from car radios. We gather, reaching out across the wires, waving from a safe distance to come together in religious community. From living room to front porch to car seat, we gather as we are able, ready to be of service to each other, to the world, ready to build the community of hope and of love. As we face this bright morning, we may be apart, but we are together, offering our love, our commitment, our hope, and our prayers in service to one another and this world. It is a new way, but an old way, that we come together and worship today. Amen. Our first hymn is, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. our scripture this morning. We begin today with the reading of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, 
I shall not be in want. Lord, the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my, restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And we'll continue with a reading from the 10th chapter of John. Uh, this is Jesus speaking. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them. And the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our gate. Uh, this particular Sunday, in the church year because of the uh, lessons that we hear is often called Good Shepherd Sunday. And we do recognize that um, God and Jesus Christ are our Good Shepherd. But in connection with our gospel for today, where Jesus talks about being the gate for the sheep, being our gate, I've been thinking a lot about gates since I read this gospel. We have lots of gates in our society. We have gates on farms. We have gates as we go into events like sporting events. Um, we have gated communities. We have gates in our fences, um, in our yards. But I was thinking too about other kinds of gates, other kinds of gates that our society uh, puts out there. And one thing that I was thinking about was um, a show that my kids and I have been watching during this quarantine time. We've been watching the Netflix series Stranger Things, which was a new show for me. But Stranger Things has a gate in it. A gate that lets the upside down world of evil and death seep into the upside world that we live in. Of course, the upside down world is dark and evil and violent and full of death. And of course, this evil is manifested in a monster in the show. But also, there is a cross-generational group of kids and youth and adults who work together to wage war on this monster. And their goal is to keep trying to close the gate to this upside down world. The ironic thing is that the gate was originally opened 
by people on this side of the gate. And now they have to deal with closing it. I see this premise in a lot of our movies and television in our society. The Avengers had to close the gate to evil aliens who were going to attack the Earth. Many sci-fi shows have gates to places that bring death and destruction. But the basic premise in our culture and society is that gates keep bad things out. And often our definition of bad things is based on fear. Fear for our safety, fear of losing wealth and power. And while there are real threats out there, gates can often create the illusion that we are safe in one place and don't have to deal with what's outside the gate. But Jesus' gate, the gate that Jesus is talking about in our gospel, is very different than this modern premise of gates that keep evil out. Because the reality is that good and evil live together in this world. We can't separate them out into two different worlds. We are living out this reality right now in the midst of this pandemic. Jesus is well aware of this when he says that he is the gate for the sheep. Shepherds put their sheep in a corral during the night for safety. During the day, the sheep are brought out to find pasture and still water. They don't stay on one side of the gate. They go in and out. But it is the shepherd who leads, who guides and protects the sheep, whether they are inside the sheepfold or outside, in the pasture or in the world. Even the sheepfold isn't completely safe from evil. Jesus recognizes the existence of thieves and bandits who sneak in and try to steal and destroy and kill. That's why the gate and the voice of the shepherd is so important. The shepherd's voice is the sheep's way of discerning where their safety lies. I think right now in our society, it is hard to hear the shepherd's voice. We watch the news and spend time on social media and we get inundated with voices. How do we discern where our gate is? How do we discern where our shepherd is? How do we discern our shepherd's voice? Well, I think Jesus gives us a clue in verse 10 of our gospel reading. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Voices that seek to steal and kill and destroy are not voices that come from our gate or our shepherd, Jesus. Voices that give life are the voice of our shepherd. That is our gate. Voices that speak about giving rather than stealing. Voices that speak about healing rather than killing. Voices that speak about building up rather than destroying. These are the voices of our shepherd. So I'm curious now to see how Stranger Things pans out. Because the group that's trying to close this gate is also a broken group. A group of people that lives with broken relationships, with the effects of bad choices. They're trying to discern what's going to be helpful and what's going to be harmful. Choosing violence to solve their problems, grieving the losses that they've endured, seeking forgiveness. Yet it is this broken group of people 
that sticks together, discerns together what the most helpful course of action is, trying to reconcile their mistakes and save the world that they know and love. There's no mention of God or Jesus in this show, but there is love, there is forgiveness. There are things that give life and those are the voices that they try so hard to listen to in the midst of evil and destruction. In a way, it's a metaphor for our world right now. As the thieves of coronavirus, death, hunger, unemployment, racism, isolation, and uncertainty break in to steal and kill and destroy. Yet in the midst of it all, our shepherd calls to us, calls to us with words of abundant life. His voice cuts through the voice of fear, calls us to come in and out of the gate of himself in order to find life and love and healing. Amen. I was contacted uh, this past week by Eric Brooks, a member of Trinity and the mayor of South Milwaukee. Um, he contacted me about um, the struggle that um, people are having right now with hunger and asked that we support human concerns of South Milwaukee. So I would lift up an offering for human concerns. Eric is going to post uh, the link to um, a GoFundMe page so that you could donate to human concerns. This is one of those voices of giving rather than stealing that we listen to in the world. A voice that helps those who are most vulnerable in our society to have abundant life even in the midst of everything that's going on. So as we listen to our introduction for the next hymn, um, Eric will post that. Uh, prayerfully consider a donation to human concerns at this time.
will lead us in prayer. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherd God, walk ahead of those who work to heal us, provide care and necessities. Doctors, nurses, medical workers, first responders, police officers, teachers, food workers, infrastructure, and emotional, spiritual, and mental care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in an agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands and keep them safe as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in need. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. As more and more are jobless, homeless, and hungry, help us to satisfy the needs of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety in this uncertain time, overwhelmed with suffering, be it through disease, grief, or loneliness. We lift our prayers before you now. Please offer a prayer aloud and also in the comments for all to lift up. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries, and feeding ministries. Human concerns of South Milwaukee, All People's Gathering, Lutheran World Relief. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives of faithful witness. Be with the family and friends of Joe and the family and friends of Carrie, who both passed away this week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And please share a word of peace with those around you and also in the comments for all. Our final hymn is Have No Fear, Little Flock. Um... 
brought forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. <laughs>